Next on the docket, we have um, Eric Weinstein on the Joe Rogan podcast, Joe Rogan Experience, having a little bit, um, feeling a little bit aggrieved by the treatment that he's been receiving from Tim Dillon, which is hilarious, right? If you've been familiar, I posted a clip from Tim Dillon's Patreon, which you should definitely sign up to. It's easily the best $5 I've ever spent on Patreon, easily. Very, very, very worth it. Um, he uploads about two, maybe one to two clips, bonus shows on his Patreon per week, as well as the other tiers. You get like a Rush Charles tier where he sometimes uploads like, you know, long form video um, interviews or feature films that he puts together regardless. But, you know, in general, it's Tim Dillon. He's always great value to listen to regardless on what platform he's on. And he had like a little, you know, three minute segment where he kind of ripped to pieces some of the guys involved with the intellectual dark web and basically questioned their credentials in a jokingly and not so jokingly way which is you know valid enough right because especially in the last few months with the resurgence of clubhouse the app uh brett weinstein you know eric weinstein lex friedman uh who else i've seen on there from the idw i'm not sure i've seen um I'm not sure if I've seen Sam Harris, maybe um, Dave Rubin, the kind of the guy that's kind of been ousted from that group. He was in there, but a lot of those guys are spending a lot of time in those, you know, spaces, basically getting, I think Brett Weinstein got basically shouted at by a group of students for being a white guy in some space and he had to kind of apologize and basically got kicked out eventually. Eric Weinstein's obviously, you know, they're talking about the identity politics and cancer culture stuff that he's usually talking about. And it's just interesting because these guys are always kind of, as Tim did and said, viewed as being very smart and very educated people who surround themselves with people who are also very smart and educated and sometimes wealthy and have businesses and whatnot maybe obviously Eric Weinstein is a managing director at Till Capital right Peter Till's little consultation or whatever think tank company that he's part of and again no one really knows what anyone does in this kind of you know LA intellectual grifty sort of thing which is probably advantageous right you kind of want to be as um you kind of want to be as ambiguous as you can be with your occupation what you do so that you can continue doing stuff that you probably have no reason right to do because no one really knows what you do do right is that a thing there is there is sort of like a benefit to that but it's also annoying when you're just constantly talking right i'm, I'm a great person to sort of say that hypocrite here over here um but it's just funny that he got so peeved off by you know tim dylan basically suggesting that he has nothing he doesn't do much because he spends most of his time talking on a free app on clubhouse and bemoaning you know um uh gendered gendered bathrooms and stuff whatever it may be and again it was a joke said in jest but obviously some truth to it and it seemed to have stung really harsh because throughout this entire process or period tim has been constantly saying on his pod oh the wine signs hate me they hate me they hate me and i thought he was just joking around but judging by the kind of reaction that Brett had to some of the jokes and he, he made some really horrendous kind of clapback thing that, you know, his wife, Heather Hying, didn't really take too well either. I saw her face when they mentioned Tim's Dylan's name and she didn't seem too amused. It does seem like that intellectual dark web crew, with the exception of maybe Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson, they're very incapable of laughing at themselves, which makes it difficult as again, because I'm a fan of these guys. I like, I love the portal, right? Um, I love Brett Weinstein's thing. What's it called? Um, with the Rhino, I forgot what it's called. Dark Horse Podcast, right? I love all those guys, right? Especially during COVID. Um, Brett Weinstein and his wife Heather have been a really good resource in terms of getting an understanding as to how this virus spread in the first place. Obviously, Eric has he's, he's a really good guest on some shows, but especially with Eric, because people have noticed that he started to like you know thinking his shit doesn't stink anymore. So I think that Tim Dillon Barb came at just the right time to sort of simmer him down a bit, and then he went on the Joe Rogan show and basically started crying one more time about the entire thing and brought it up again so this is definitely proof that tim is tim definitely got to eric in a way that he probably shouldn't have considering um you know eric's achievements and what he's done and whatnot he shouldn't really be bothered or you know caring or what what flipping tim didn't have to say but again this is the world that we live in isn't it i was you know you know this question like what has eric weinstein ever done i did that I did the marginal revolution. He's engaged there. No, no, no. That question is Tim Dillon joking around. Yeah, I know. He said, "What did he? He never created the Actually, rotato. He was just was very joking. Fun. He was fucking around." That was the funny part about it. He was joking. But he's saying that because he knows you're brilliant. I you love understand? Him the too. only reason why he can say that, if Joe, you were a loser, Joe, Joe, he couldn't say Joe, that. Joe, uh, you don't need to make me feel good about myself. I know, but you brought it up again. <laughs> no, I'm, ta I'm saying something completely different. Okay. Okay. I actually have been scared of this question. What question? That qu Tim's question taken seriously. Who's going to take it seriously? I'm taking it seriously. Okay. No, no. You, no. You're
you're in a weird world. Okay, here's here's your weird world. You're in a world of serious intellectual people. But you're, you're damn out straight. With, you're also hanging out with Tim Dillon and me. I, and I love it. But it's it's but the problem is like you you're conflating Joe, these two Joe, things. Joe, no, it, Joe, I'm not that angry at Tim Dillon. It's not. I'm not, not that angry. <laughs> you hear that? You heard the word. You heard the word that. That's a problem. Well, you're not that angry at Carlos Mencia. I'm not angry at him at all. I know. Ooh, I'm, not I'm angry at Tim Dillon. I'm sad. I'm sad for, for Tim Dillon. <laughs> anyway, should be sad for Tim. He's, wait, 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 wait. He's one of the most important comedians of our time. Okay, how dare you? How dare I? Oh Jesus Christ, man! And again, I don't blame the guy. To be honest, if I completely fair to him, I don't blame him. I guess it's um, it's a natural consequence of being somewhat famous in a field that no one really gives a shit about when it comes to public intellectuals, right? It sh it, sh it should be something that you shouldn't be you shouldn't be commanding views of like upwards of the half a millions for you know speaking about stuff that most people can't really comprehend because you happen to have like a an insanely high IQ, whatever it may be. So it's in this weird world where you really shouldn't be famous for being as intellectually brilliant as you are, but he is. And then you're being famous in your, what, mid-50s or whatever he, however old he is. It must do something to your brain. It must be a bit strange. And then you're hanging around in certain groups and you're going to certain things and you're, you know, you're exposed to, you know, different innovations and technologies that are taking place behind the scenes that no one's really aware of. It's going to change the future of mankind. All this from a lucky, it's a lot of stuff to kind of contain in one person's brain and when when somebody sort of calls you out and basically questions your validity you no know, questions your um position or questions your place in the culture it can get a little bit tense it can make you feel a bit weird overall but it's probably best that again it's like a blessing and a curse it's probably for the best that you you know become more successful and become famous in your 50s as opposed to of course when you're like 18 and stuff and you're still developing as a human but i do maintain that it must be a bit of a mind fuck it really does like he was just a dude that was what lecturing and consulting startups and stuff whatever it may be in silicon valley having somewhat mildly cult iconic what some somehow like a cult following maybe in a particular niche in a particular sort of subculture whatever it may be and then suddenly you're brought upon you know one of the biggest shows in the world you gain a massive following you do your own podcast that brings you uh that allows you with the income to be a little bit more flexible to do your own thing and then you know your brother's a world you know becomes famous too if you're getting kicked out and sacked from his university and all this malarkey it must do something to your head it definitely must but it's just funny as a tim dylan fan to see that those little barbs those little disses right those little jabs that he threw at this guy is just kind of being funny and poking fun um, has really cut deep with these people who are so brilliant that they shouldn't be really wasting their time with what this pig has to say. But, you know, the world that we live in at the moment, you sometimes react to the little bit of hate as opposed to the chorus of claps and praises and dick sucks that occur out there, innit? But hey, what can you do?